this is the truth. This is the most vulnerable I think that I have ever been on the internet, but it's time. It's time to tell you what's really been going on, why I've been gone, what it's really like to live in South Korea, like really honestly what it's like. Hopefully warn some of you and help some of you if you're coming here too or interested in coming here. There are some trigger warnings, so I will keep the timestamps down in the description box. We have so much to talk about. So let's get right into it. If you don't know who I am, hi, my name is Megan. I have been living and working here in Seoul, South Korea since March of 2021. On and off, I go back and forth to America a lot. That's where I am from. I've been calling Korea home since probably last year because it really had become my home. My community was here. My closest friends were here. Everything that made me tick in life was here. And then 2023 came around and wow. If you would have asked me a few months ago, 2023, how's it going? I would have said, what's what's the return policy? How do we return it? Cause I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I would like to return this year. And now a few months later, I can tell you, this has been one of the most pivotal years of my life and I wouldn't change a thing. And when you hear all that's happened, you'll probably think I'm a little crazy, but it'll make sense, so let's get into it. January 1st of this year, we were off to not the best start, if I'm being honest. My closest, dearest, best friend, Mildred, I know you're watching this, I love you. She was hoping to live in Seoul. She was actually living outside of Seoul, but she had the plans to get a new teaching contract here in the city and to have your like best friend abroad. People don't talk about community abroad enough. They talk about all the fun things that you can do in Korea, but they don't talk about the reality of living in a foreign country and the challenges that come, especially with community. When you live abroad, community is like a pressure cooker. Foreigners are under a very, very stressful situation where your daily comforts have been stripped from you, you don't even realize what daily comforts are until you don't have them. Like being able to walk into Walmart and just talk to the cashier or ask a question or go somewhere and not have to worry about how to act or what mannerisms do I need to use and how do I be respectful? And you don't realize until you don't have it. And so when you move abroad, you're stripped of all these comforts, you're outside of your comfort zone all the time because of it, you're trying new things, which can be fun, but it can be tiring. And then community is few and far between sometimes, unless you find like a church like I have, which has literally changed my life. But even with that church that has changed my life, it's still tough because it's so transient. People constantly coming and going. And every semester, you have a rush, a flood of new people that come to Korea and it's exciting, you know, they're excited, so you're excited, but then you meet a friend and you develop this close friendship and then you have to say goodbye. And at first you think, oh, not a big deal, but then the more times you say goodbye, the more that you kind of grow a callus in your heart to being vulnerable to people. When you've opened up so much just to say goodbye so much, you get tired and you start to think, well, gosh, if this is all it's about and I'm gonna have to just keep doing this, like it's gonna happen again and again, not always intentionally, but sometimes it's just unintentionally, you start isolating yourself a bit more because it gets so tiring. And then you kind of latch on to certain people even more so, especially if they think that they're gonna live here for a bit longer. And then Mildred, my closest friend, is the perfect example of somebody I latched on. I thought she was gonna be here for a whole other year. And then just like that, her sister got in a terrible car accident and and literally I'm so grateful and and thankful that I can say like she's doing much better but at the time it was really important that Mildred go home to help with the healing process. All of a sudden you think your best friend's going to be here, this person that is literally your ride or die, your closest friend that you've ever had is suddenly gone. And not even that, but you know, my friend Mildred and then there was one other friend who was a guy and we were like the trio, like the three of us were so close. And so when one person leaves a trio, the dynamic shifts. And so it just felt like I was kind of losing two friends in one. And man, what a way to start off the new year, am I right? <laughs> I remember waking up January 2nd and my eyes were like swollen shut because I had cried so hard the night before. And just thinking like, community has been a really huge struggle of mine throughout life. I've not been accepted a lot throughout my life for just who I was or I've felt rejected or like a misfit, like I just am an outcast. 
And so for a long time, I felt like the outsider. So when you finally meet those people that love you for you, that make you feel included and wanted, to lose that was so hard. But you keep pushing on. And that's what you have to do sometimes. You, have just, you just have to keep going. You have to keep pushing through all of the struggles, all of the pain. And I have a job and I love to help people. I love to be able to make videos as a full-time career in helping people to live in South Korea, a country that I do really love. And so I just focused on my work. I focused on, I, I was able to go home and see my family a bit. And fast forward to end of February, early March, I come back to Korea like, let's go, right? I felt so encouraged, motivated, refreshed. I was I was the most excited I had ever been to come back to Korea and get to making videos, get back to the content game. And then in the middle of March, um, I don't go out anymore. I don't go to the party scenes anymore because I've had so many bad experiences. And this was the one night I made an exception because it was my friend's birthday. There was a loose, you know, older, acquaintance that I had made while in Korea and they owned a establishment and my friend really wanted to go out and go out on the town and it's her birthday right and I want to support her and go with her even though I don't want to go. I end up in Hongdae and if you guys know anything about Hongdae it is very it's, it's a party area in some of it. It is very heavily party and if you go on a Saturday night and you're claustrophobic in crowds, that's me. It's not, it's not the place to be. No, nope. no, 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 would not recommend. And so all the lines to all these places to go are just incredibly long. So I messaged the acquaintance that I had and I said, hey, it's my friend's birthday. Lines are super long everywhere. He replied instantly. We went, he walked us in. So we missed, you know, passed the line, brought my friend a birthday drink, just all of this like, Great, she's having a great birthday. Do I feel uncomfortable? Maybe, but that's fine, right? She's having a great birthday. That's what it's all about, right? First lesson I have learned this year is truly, you don't have to people please. People will still love you. The people that matter will still love you even if you don't necessarily want to partake in something that they would like to partake in. But I was with two friends and they are not from Korea. You know, they're just visiting. So I'm trying to help them get their taxis and get home safe because again, I just wanna be there for everyone, care for everyone. And then I, you know, see my acquaintance kind of saying like, I, I kind of wanna leave. And they're like, oh, well, we didn't get the chance to really talk. Let's talk a bit and then I can take you home. This isn't the first time that I had seen this person when I was like out in Hongdae. And so they actually had given me rides home in the past you know in my head I'm thinking just like old times you know not a big deal so we talk a bit and to make a really sad long story short I thought I was going home I did not go home I don't remember much of the evening and sadly I was taken advantage of and um, I wish I didn't remember anything but there are snippets of memory that I have the act in itself is horrible it is repulsive, it is selfish, but what's sad is what people do to themselves when that's happened to them. And I wish I could say that nothing like this has ever happened to me before, but for a long time, I blamed myself. I didn't want it to happen, but I was part of it. So I felt like I must be the problem. I got myself into this mess. But in Korea, you can't suppress, you can't hide as well because I needed medical attention. I needed help and I didn't know where to go and I did not speak enough Korean to know even who to ask, where to go. And so all of a sudden I am faced with, I have to talk about this. I have to seek help. And I first want to say, if this has ever happened to you, please call the police. There's a specific clinic and you are to go and this is how you can seek medical attention and they will help you and you do have to share your story and get tested. They provide everything. I'm really sad to say it sounds like this is way too common in Korea. It's too common in the world, but it's just not talked about, especially here. And so I want to provide those resources and I plan to make a full separate video to talk about that specific issue. This was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. To have to talk to police, to have to go through this case. It was months of getting tested again and again and again. There was a pregnancy scare as well. 
it was weeks of feeling like I had to keep reliving the event. But at the same time, I am so incredibly grateful that I didn't have to pay anything, that I was able to get so much attention and help. I mean, they even offered counseling. However, it is a Korean counselor, so you would have to use a translator. I already have a counselor, so I, I was really blessed. And I think everyone honestly should go to counseling. Does not mean that you're broken. It means you're human and you can learn so much about yourself and you can heal parts of yourself that you never thought were healable because you have an outsider speaking into your life and helping you see things that you can't see. So I, I cannot recommend counseling enough, but I am so grateful that this country provided so much help and assistance, but it still doesn't make it easy, right? So this is mid-March. I had to get tested up until six months after the incident. So that would come with waves of grief, with waves of everything. I mean, I thought I was done with Korea, but what is incredible, and I, I still can't believe that I can say this to you guys, because of this horrible incident, and because it happened in a foreign country, I had to get help. I had to ask for help. I couldn't do it on my own. I couldn't just hide and run away and deal with it by myself. I had to talk to people about it. And that is why community is so important because I had dear friends who loved me so well. And they were able to be the megaphone of truth that I had convinced myself out of believing for myself. They helped reveal to me these lies that I had been carrying with myself for literally almost a decade that I'm broken or that I'm dirty or that I'm used goods. And from this horrible incident, it began the healing. We had a prayer night at my house and I had never in my life felt so loved by people who are not my blood family. But I expressed what happened and to be prayed over and loved for and cared for, I cannot explain the beauty that came out of evil, what Satan used for evil, God used it for good. And I can tell you that that was the, that incident was a snowball that started to roll into this beautiful grand scheme of redemption. But it's kind of like my identity, who I was, was a flower that wanted to bloom, but all of these weeds had wrapped themselves up around my identity, my, my who I really am, and they were suffocating me from that true potential of being able to bloom in the person that I had always been created to be. And through talking about all that I had experienced in my past, people could help me see the lies that I was believing in myself. I'm either gonna link a different video or eventually upload a different video that goes more into this topic, but if this is something that you struggle with, I just wanna quickly say, and I mean it so sincerely, it's not your fault. You are not dirty. You are worth loving. You are worth it. And in time, if it's supposed to happen, you'll find somebody that sees you and sees your worth and sees your value and will not want to let it go. Your past reminds you it doesn't define you. So please know you're worth loving. You are worth love. I'll talk about that in another video, but I want to keep explaining what has happened. So obviously this is a really hard and traumatic thing to experience abroad. Long story short, I didn't have a lot of friends that could help me in this whole mess because a lot of times I needed somebody that could speak Korean because I was going to hospitals. Sometimes they had translators. Sometimes it was just the doctor spoke enough English to get by, but there was one specific meeting where I knew I wasn't gonna have a translator and it would have been good to have a friend that could come with me that spoke Korean. The only person available for this specific day time was a guy who I had started to slowly develop feelings for, but they were not reciprocated by the guy at this point. But the mess of everything that unfolds, all of a sudden we found ourselves in kind of a trauma bond where you get really close with this person because you're going through something very traumatic. And trauma bonds are very real and they can develop very quickly, right? You can develop feelings and care for the other person very quickly if you go through something like that. And so suddenly this person who did not have any feelings for me is confused and is like, I feel like I do, but I don't really know what's going on. God made it very clear that this person and I were supposed to date. And so 
we started dating and like I said, a trauma bond makes this bond super tight. So we were super close. I don't know what they would say looking back on it, but I know what I would say. And I would say it was love, it was deep care, and it was really serious. So serious that this person met my family, I met their family, and there was talk of marriage. And then all of a sudden, I'm not dating this person anymore. And that was in the middle of September. Breakups, when the relationship is, is deep to some degree, are never easy. Living in a foreign country where that person becomes a huge, huge part of your life. You do a bunch of stuff together because again, you're in this pressure cooker environment and community is much different here. So when you find someone, you get super close, super fast. That breakup was a deep loss. And with everything that happened in January, everything that happened in March, every not just March when the incident happened, but the months of mess after that. Middle of September, all of a sudden I'm single and I'm sitting on this couch going, what the heck? I can't eat, I can't sleep, I can't understand what you're doing, God. And honestly, I was done. I was done with Korea. I was looking for ways to get out of my apartment contract. I just wanted to cut everything. I just wanted to cut the ties and get out of here. And I prayed about it and I just felt God say, October 23rd. And I won't I won't say that God and I usually talk like this all the time. I didn't know where this was going. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe, you know, what what is the what why October 23rd? And I just was like, is it real? Is it? and eventually I got to the point where I said, I don't know if it's real, but if it is, maybe I should trust that voice. So I bought a ticket for October 23rd. Mind you, this is middle of September. I just want to get the heck out of Korea, but I didn't. And so I looked, I was like, okay, I've got a few weeks. Okay, why am I here? What's the point? And I remembered Chuseok, which is a like, it's the Korea Thanksgiving. I remembered, I told you guys that I wanted to have a big meetup. And so I was like, yeah, let's have this meetup. Had the meetup, it went so well, met so many of you incredible people, so many great conversations and just love. Like everybody that came that day was just a gem. It reminded me why I was in Korea. And then because of this heartbreak, I had a new desire to be in the word of God because it's incredible. It's a love letter from God to us. And so all of a sudden, I have such a desire to be in the word more. And because of this place of brokenness, I started making this scripture memory cacao group chat. And Dennis, you're probably watching this too. I love you, little bro. Dennis was another one of my subscribers who came to my online uh, meetup events. Dennis is not a believer. He goes, I really want to join that. I'm like, you go for it, buddy. Why not? I don't know why, but go. And he joins the group and he goes, just this week, I felt like God was telling me I need to get a Bible. And then you tell us, hey, I'm, I'm starting the scripture memory chat. And it just seemed like this was meant to be like, God must be speaking to me. So he joins the chat. He's like, I'm hoping to come to Korea and find like a Bible because I don't have one. And I was like, say no more. I have one. Gave him my Bible. I shared the gospel with him. He gave his life to the Lord and he became a Christian. And it was like, I am witnessing in front of me my heart's desire, which is to love people and bring them to true love. And then I met another subscriber, Nina, and she has become like a rock friend for me. And she just so happened to come to Korea and she came to the meetup and she just so happened to live 10 minutes down the street from me because she just so happened to buy an Airbnb on my street. I found worship uh, events to attend every Friday night and every Saturday night here in Seoul. If you're interested, you know, message me on Instagram and I'll tell you more about them. But I started attending all these events that I had thought about going to, but just never did. But because I was hurting, because my heart was hurting, I wanted more of God, more of his love. And so I just started going to all the things. And all of a sudden, I realized why God had me stay. And it was because there was blessing that he wanted to give to me that if I would have just run away, I would have missed. But it took me being vulnerable. It took me leaning into God in that hard place. It took me trusting God with the pain and the brokenness and knowing if you brought me here, if my heart is still beating, if there's still air in my lungs, if I'm still alive, I have purpose and I have meaning. And in those few weeks, 
it was like I just became overwhelmed with understanding as to why I'm here, why I'm in this world. I felt loved beyond belief by God in a way I had never been in my life. And all of a sudden, I can't get enough of the Bible. I can't get enough of his presence. And I am just going to every event I can, and I'm, I'm, I'm finishing the Bible as fast as I can. You know, I just want to read and be with him. October 23rd comes, the day I'm supposed to leave. And I sat in my prayer closet, and I just felt God say, you know my voice. You know my voice. Stop questioning. Stop worrying. I got it. I got it. I got you. I'm proud of you. And I knew that day, October 23rd, was divinely appointed. And I went home to the States to heal further, to just let go of all things YouTube, just be with God, to pray, to be with Him. And I can happily report, I am the best I've ever been. <laughs> After all of the mess and all of the certainty getting ripped from me. The life that you start to live when you think that you're gonna spend your life with somebody, you start thinking down the line of it, right? And, and it was all gone. All I had was God. And sometimes he has to take you to the point where you have nothing else but him for you to realize that he's all you need. And he really is all I need. I am so in love that my heart overflows and I'm overwhelmed because a few months ago I said I didn't want to really be alive and I said it a lot. I didn't say it in the way that I wanted to take my life but I said it in a way where I was done. <laughs> I didn't see the point. I didn't see the meaning. Life just got harder and harder and lonelier and lonelier. And I had this job that everybody wished that they could have. And I loved what I did, but I hated it at the same time because I had to put myself on a camera and tell you guys how to get to this country when I felt like the country was eating me alive and ripping me apart. That's why I backed off. But the exciting news I have is I am back and I am better than ever. And God made it very clear to me that I am to start two podcasts, so I'm telling you about them to keep myself accountable. One is just about the honest, real truth of what it's like to live in Korea. I want to have podcasts where it maybe it's just me or I sit down with a guest and I just tell you guys the real truth about things to look out for, what it's like really being a student, what it's really like being in the entertainment industry, these visas that you guys wanna have and you ask me questions, what are those visas really like? And so one of them will be a deep dive into Korea and it'll be a video podcast, so I will post those on my channel as well. But the other podcast, it is stories of redemption. It's stories that God has given me through my life that show you guys and show the world how I am who I am how I've healed, how I've overcome, how I can look to you and tell you with 100% honesty, I would not change my story for a second. I wouldn't change anything about it because the strength and the confidence and the love that I have now that I've only had for the past like two months, but that this, this moment, the love that I have for God I don't want anybody to take that from me. It's the best gift in the world. And I wanna share with you how I got here. There is much I've learned in 30 years. And so I can't wait to introduce you guys to Loved Back to Life, the podcast of stories of redemption, of how I became who I am, how other people have become who they are, and how we can all live bolder and stronger and more confident as we come to know Christ. It's supposed to infuse hope and encouragement and help you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength a little bit more as we recount together stories of God's faithfulness, of truth, 
and I just share with you what God has been teaching me. It'll also be a video podcast as well. It'll be on a different channel and in a different Instagram title, and so look out for that in advance. I'm back. I am truly better than ever, and I just want to say thank you so much. You guys sent me so many encouraging messages along the way when I wasn't even really telling you what had happened to any detailed degree. You have no idea how much your support has helped me. Some of you have given financially in ways that I didn't think anybody would ever desire to give. I cannot thank you enough. Those acts of giving helped me pay my rent because I could not physically put my face on the internet. I couldn't do my job because I was just in too much pain. But I, I just wanted to say thank you because I would not still be here if it wasn't for your guys' support and your love and your encouragement along the way. And honestly, just biggest thanks to God because I never thought that I would be sitting here on my 30th birthday saying, I am so excited for life. <laughs> I am so excited for the future and I cannot wait to see what he has in store. <laughs> oh, thank you. <sighs> Good things are coming your way soon. I hope you guys have a merry, merry Christmas. Remember the reason for the season. Remember you are loved. You're so loved. See you soon.